I'm Duncan McLeod, and this is the Tech Central Podcast. Now, we've got a fascinating conversation coming up next. We're going to be having a look at the history of Amazon Web Services in South Africa and um, how what is now a substantial part of Amazon.com's business got its start in Cape Town. And we're also going to have a look at where AWS is going in the South African context. So to do all of this, I'm very pleased to welcome Clive Charlton to the podcast now. Clive is head of solution architecture for sub-Saharan Africa at Amazon Web Services. Clive, it's uh, great to have you here. Welcome. I presume you're based down in Cape Town with the rest of the Amazon crowd. I am based in, in Cape Town. Thanks very much for having me, Duncan. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks and welcome. Welcome to the, the podcast. Now, um, I've been seeing headlines just in the last few weeks about uh, Amazon moving into a fancy new office park in Cape Town. Uh, where is this new facility exactly, Clive, and, and what's behind its development? Um, th this is based in uh, the River Club uh, development near Observatory in, in Cape Town. Okay. Um, and uh, really Amazon looking to consolidate the existing offices. Okay, where, where are you at the moment? Uh, we have a number of offices in, in Cape Town, um, the gardens area of Cape Town, if you know that. I don't know Cape Town all that well, I must say. Gardens, I think, is somewhere near the CBD, isn't it? That's right, yes, just the northern part of the, uh, the CBD towards the mountain. Okay, and you've got multiple um, offices there. Obviously, you've also built a, a data center region in Cape Town uh, not that long ago. Is that also in the similar region? Are we going to see uh, the data centers being moved? I know you can't exactly move these things very easily, or so are they going to stay where they've been built or are they going to be moved into the river river club development as well uh, no no those will remain where they are they're they're you know very large investments um and a lot of infra infrastructure behind those so uh, that's not something that's very easy to move can't just pick up uh, a thousand servers and move them easily across town. <laughs> that's right exactly now clive um it, it's it's not like uh, aws and amazon are are new to south africa um the companies yet to launch its retail operations in South Africa. And I hope that's something that uh, Amazon is planning to do at some point, but that's not what we're here to discuss today. We're going to look specifically at, at the Amazon Web Services business and its history in South Africa. Um, it's been, a, in some respects, I guess, uh, South Africa and Cape Town specifically have been a, a particularly important market for, for Amazon because some of the early services on which Amazon Web Services were was built we actually developed uh, by teams here in cape town how, how did that happen originally how did um, how did south africa get such a pivotal role in the early days of the development of amazon web services clive mm. um well we're, we're lucky to, to be here sort of after 15 years of aws at the at you know leading the cloud ev evolution um we we started the development of aws as a result of supporting the retail site, amazon.com, and distributed teams around the world, um, which was getting more and more difficult to manage. Um, and we started looking at uh, the infrastructure requirements and you know that's where the concept of the cloud. Um, and we used our Cape Town development, development team um, that started out right here 15 years ago, developing our early services in um, EC2, which is our virtual machine, and really the core of, of cloud computing. Uh, since then, the, the, the development team is, is still here, um, you know, also other sites of, around the world. Um, and the local data, data center that you mentioned um, has seen the cloud business thriving in, in, in South Africa, and it continues to play a key role in the development of AWS in South Africa and the African continent as well. It's just interesting how uh, Amazon uh, came uh, came to be it came to do so much work through these teams in Cape Town though. Uh, I mean, this is a company that's based in in Seattle on the northwestern uh, coast of the United States. I, I think uh, other than Hawaii, you'd be hard pressed to to find a place on planet Earth that's further away from Cape Town than Seattle. Um, how how did it be, how did it come to be that that Cape Town was this um, pivotal? Uh, and central place where where the early days of or the early technologies of of Amazon Web Services were actually developed. Well, I, I believe it was uh, some of the the key personnel involved in the original uh, designs and development were um, South African based, but I think it also talks to to the depth um, of skills and talent that we have in South Africa. That there was the confidence to do this in South Africa and remain so. Um, you know, we have. 
we've grown our local teams um, to a permanent work workforce of just over 7,000 people in Cape Town now. Wow. Wow. That's, uh, that's an impressive number. 7,000 people. And are, are most of those people uh, in software development? Uh, what's, what sort of skills have, uh, what's the skills mix look like of those 7,000 people? Uh, it, it's quite a quite a range of skills. Um, everything from call center personnel to software development, um, pre-sales, architecture, like myself. Um, so quite a range of range of, of roles and skills. So when 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 Amazon Web Services, um, I mean the, the initial products that were being developed in Cape Town uh, were were the well they were mainly the EC2 Elastic Compute Cloud offering. Um, which is EC2 still around today as a as a as a product? Oh, absolutely. Um, and EC2 forms the backbone of computing. It's a, a, a virtual computer that you can uh, spin up and uh, you know, shut down as you wish. But we've also um, uh, developed it into, into a whole family of, of products because every customer has a different uh, requirement. You know, some customers need compute optimized uh, virtual machines, while others need memory optimized or um, uh, GPU accelerated machines. So uh, we, we have the, the widest range of available compute families um, of all cloud providers today. Now, 7,000 people working in your South Africa and specifically your Cape Town uh, operation must make it one of the biggest Amazon Web Services operations outside of the United States. Do you, do you know offhand um, whether South Africa, where South Africa sits in that ranking in terms of uh, the size of operations of AWS around the world? Oh, I don't, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah, but uh, but I think it would probably be um, amongst the larger offices. Um, but I'm not, not sure okay. you know, where it would fall. Okay, and and what is what is AWS in Cape Town? I mean, seven thousand people is one heck of a lot of people. What are they What are they all doing exactly? Are, are you um, is Amazon Web Services doing a lot of its uh, development in Cape Town now? Um, well, some of the, the the core development on the EC2 platform remains um, in in Cape Town. There are some of the other services as well um, that uh, that are developed and supported from from Cape Town. Um, but we have a, a large number of services now, over 175 of them, that are developed, you know, from development centres all around the world. Um, so uh, so there is the support for that. Um, in addition. That we we have uh, the call centers supporting both uh, AWS and the and the retail site, and then of course um, the uh, the commercial and public sector teams uh, supporting our customers in South Africa and the rest of Africa. Okay, and, and I suppose being a global operation, a lot of the work is uh, is based on uh, time zones, and uh, it, it just moves around the world as the sun moves, right? That's right. The supports are, are what we call a follow the sun support so um you know uh, support cases that uh, are long running uh, will transfer between uh, the, the call centers around the world so someone's always working on them yeah. um there's no there's no downtime between you know call centers or time zones now seven thousand uh, people in your cape town office um and I, I see that you are still aggressively hiring i see amazon job ads and all the online uh, jobs portals and um you know I've, I've come across friends of mine who are have been approached by amazon to go and work for the company so uh, clearly um you 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 aren't done hiring yet what sort of skills are you actually looking for uh, and and um if i was interested in in coming to work for amazon dot or Amazon Web Services, rather, in Cape Town. Um, what's, what type of skills are you looking for and what should I, I know as a potential applicant? Uh, well, again, I think, you know, there's, there's a, a wide range of IT skills that, that uh, we, we're looking for. Uh, everything stretching from, from infrastructure um, and, and hardware to machine learning, uh, IoT, um, software development, uh, databases and storage. Um, uh, and any combination uh, of the above, I think, um, would would really get there. Um, we we see um, a lot of focus on um, you know what, what's termed the, the fourth industrial revolution, um, where customers are looking to uh, data science rather than the traditional analytics. So um, any experience in in data science. Um, uh, 
it would be beneficial beneficial for some for some areas. Um, in solution architecture, we look for a broad range of skills to help our customers in in cloud adoption, um, because we need to understand all of the AWS services, but also um, all of the the um, on-premise uh, software um, and components that our customers might be using. Now, all, are all of these vacancies, all these jobs that uh, Amazon is looking to fill, are they all Cape Town based or uh, is the company looking to, um, to hire in other cities in South Africa as well? Uh, um, we, we do have an office in, in Johannesburg as well, um, but much smaller. That office consists mostly of the commercial and public sector um, sales and pre-sales teams um, and some technical account support. Um, well, the you know the the predominance of the the um, the jobs, especially around the development center, will, would be in in Cape Town. Um, we're also looking at um, call center personnel, which are actually uh, remote, so uh, those folks can can work remotely anywhere in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Now, um, you've you've built a, a data center. You term it, a, I think, a, a data center region in Cape Town. This actually consists of more than one da physical data center. Um, how how big are these facilities? I don't know how much you, you're able to disclose. I know I know the hyperscale um, cloud providers are t tend to be a little bit cagey about uh, um, providing uh, detailed uh, details about the local data center regions. But um, can you give us an idea maybe of the scale of the Cape Town data center operation and whether that will be enough to continue to serve the rest of South Africa and the African markets going forward or whether you'd think you'd put down infrastructure elsewhere in South Africa and elsewhere on the continent for that matter? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't disclose too much about the, the details of, of the data centers, centers them, themselves. Okay. Um, what I can describe is, is the you know the architecture of, of um, uh, this typically cons consists of um, uh, on average three availability zones and an availability zone is a, a logical separation of a, a group of data centers. Mm. So um, in the Cape Town region, we have three availability zones, um, each one consisting of one or more data centers. Now these are linked with uh, dark fiber, so very low latency links between the availability zones. And the reason for that is um, customers need high availability and redundancy. So um, if anything should happen, um, there is a redundant data center close enough um, with really low lat latency links for, for customers to, to run their uh, redundant workloads on there. Um, we're also continue to, um, to monitor our com capacity and the uh, demand generation. And, um, and, and we continue to, to expand our regions as the, as the demand uh, goes up and we, you know, we forecast against that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's interesting. How, how, by the way, has uh, the COVID-19 pandemic affected Amazon Web Services here in South Africa? Um, have you, I mean, as a tech business, I imagine that transitioning to having your developers and other uh, talent working from home uh, probably wasn't that as much of a uh, uh, a difficulty as it was perhaps for companies that aren't as tech savvy as Amazon Web Services. But um, take a, maybe take us through some of the impact that you've seen over the last year and how you've coped with it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we, we, uh, we have been fortunate in that sense. A, a lot of um, our customer facing personnel um, traditionally moved around a lot, um, you know, before uh, the COVID pandemic. So we were used to working remotely. Uh, the real change for us now is we're not face to face with our with our customers um, while we're still in restricted travel mode. So um, we're using all uh, you know plethora of tools to uh, to have video conferences and 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 calls and that kind of thing. Um, but we we've also um, you know uh, looked to enable our particularly our, our support staff, mm -hmm. call center staff working remotely um, to ensure that our customers have got the support that they need and keep their infrastructure up and running. All right, Cloud, before I let you go, um, maybe give us a little bit of uh, flavor into where Amazon Web Services going in, Web Services rather is going in South Africa and the rest of Africa. What do you see as the investment opportunities uh, locally uh, in terms of, um, you know, perhaps putting new infrastructure on the ground? We've spoken about the, uh, the, the hiring that you're doing, but um, wh wh what do you see as the opportunity as a company, not just in South Africa, but in the, the continent more broadly? 
Yeah, I do, you know, I think customers are choosing uh, AWS over other providers, you know, all over the world and, and South Africa and Africa included because of the, the functionality and the, the vibrant community of, of, of partners that we have. You know, they, they know that they have um, the, the operational excellence and the security to run their workloads. But AWS also has more services than any other cloud providers. Um, I mentioned earlier, we have more than 175 um, services available, including things like networking, analytics, robotics, artificial intelligence, IoT, uh, to name just a few. And when you look at our, our com compute capacity, which we spoke of um, at the, the beginning of the, of the call, um, you know, many cloud providers talk about uh, offering their compute services, and it's, it's quite easy to say that, but it's around the, the detail and around the different families of, of compute capacity that we have. And we've recently launched what we call our P4D instance, which offers up to 400 gigabits per second um, of, of uh, networking, which, um, which, which no other cloud provider um, provides at the moment. Um, some of our high instances with uh, up to 24 terabytes of, of memory. Wow. And also offering a choice of chipsets from Intel, AMD, and ARM um, processors, which no other cloud provider offers at the at, at this stage. Interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, Clive Charlton is head of uh, solution architecture for Sub-Saharan Africa at Amazon Web Services. I hope to get a chance to come down and visit you guys uh, in the not too distant future. Um, COVID willing, um, third wave willing. Um, but uh, Clive, thanks so much in, in the interim for sharing your insights into what AWS is doing here in South Africa. Much appreciated. Uh, you've been mo most welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Duncan.